Extra Mile from WATE 6 on your side. Brought to you by Patriot Home Care. And good afternoon to you live from downtown Knoxville. I'm Lori Tucker. And I'm Bo Williams. We're so happy you're with us this afternoon as we go the extra mile following the USA Cycling National Championship. We are right along Gay Street where all the action is. Boy, what an exciting day. The women's race just wrapped up a few minutes yep. ago for the Pro Road National Championships. We have a winner. And it was a fantastic finish. Emma Langley leading the way. Just under three hours was her final time. Two hours, 57 minutes, 12 seconds to be exact. Exact. Yet to be exact, and four seconds behind her, just yeah. four seconds. Coming in second was Lauren D. Crescenzo out of Colorado. What a finish to watch. Yeah, I tell you what, and we should also note Lauren Stevens finished third overall. Yes. She is last year's champion, so still a strong finish for her as she broke away from the pack, kind of tried to close the gap, couldn't reel them in all the way, but still a podium finish for her, so two straight years she's finished on the podium. It, worth noting for sure, and you know, it's really interesting because those top two finishers broke away really yeah. early, and we kept thinking, is this part of the strategy? Is, are, are they going to back off a little bit, rest? No, they kept leading the charge the entire Yeah, way. matter of fact, they had a gap of almost two minutes at one point. It was closed to about a minute 25, but still a credit to those two especially tackling Sherrod Hill, just the two Sherrod of them together. Hill. Not a lot of drafting <laughs> partners there as you're going up and down that hill, but right. again, they took care of it as they were moving along. So again, fantastic opportunity and just a job that they did. But Emma Langley out of Richmond, Virginia, again, her first top podium finish uh, as far as USA Cycling is concerned here in Knoxville. Congratulations going out there. An incredible job. There has been so much logistically going into this. Yeah. Uh, planning began really last year. Yeah. And logistics, uh, things have been very smooth. The weather, thank goodness. <laughs> the weather's I don't been even fantastic. Jinx anything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's been nice. The sun's been behind the clouds. We've had a little bit of a breeze. It is a little humid, but it is East Tennessee this time of year, right? Oh, come on in. Look who we have. Yes. Hello. We have the champ. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh, thank my you. goodness. Yes. Uh, what, what, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> I'm elated. I, I still don't think I quite have the words just yet. <laughs> Let's talk about what goes into training for something like this. With such dedication. Yeah, absolutely. I've been really fortunate that my team, EF Education, TIBCO, SVB, brought me to Europe this spring. And I'll tell you, there's there's no racing harder than that to really get you ready for anything. <laughs> Let me ask you this. They, they shortened the course this year, which meant an extra lap going up Sherrod Hill. How was that just tackling that hill at least one extra time? I mean, wh what is that like, first of all? Yeah, um, climbing is definitely fits under my strengths, so I wasn't too unhappy when I heard we got an extra lap up there. Um, it's always a hard race no matter what, and um, the harder it is, that just suits our entire team a little better, so it played to our strengths. It was just two of you there kind of breaking away, so I mean, Early. kind of walk everybody through. You guys have to work together, even though you may not be on the same team, kind of help each other out I mean, as far as maintaining and keeping the peloton in your rearview mirror. Right, so we can came in with uh, five girls and we knew any five of us could win. We wanted to make the race hard and uh, my break stuck with one other rider, but I still knew I had four teammates behind me that could win. So <laughs> working with Lauren, but then also just knowing we had girls behind that could that, also that take teamwork them. is critical. Absolutely. Let's talk more about that. Yep. It's you can't do this without teammates. So uh, at the start of the race, we were covering moves, staying attentive, and then before my break stuck, we were just keeping the pressure on and making sure everyone's legs were tired so that I could get away. <laughs> I don't know how you did it. Hats <laughs> off to you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Emma, yeah, thank there you so very much. Emma Langley joining us right now. We'll let you get back thank to whatever you need to do. Thank you. Go back All and right. celebrate. Yes. Relax. Exactly. <laughs> you yeah. Put it. your feet up for a little bit. So, again, congratulations going out to here. What a, a great finish. First of all, I'd be out of breath. I'd I still be, be, be on small. oxygen right now, I, I think, if, if I finish. And when she said that Sherrod. <laughs> That huge hill she that was I call a 90 on. degree hill, that's a place to her strength. Yeah, exactly. And you do, you have more that are more climbers, others are more about speed. Right. Uh, obviously, that played to her advantage and she took advantage of it. It was fantastic. Worked out well for her. So, congratulations, yeah. super person. She's at 27 years old at yeah. Greenwich, Connecticut. Fantastic. Yeah. Good to see Very you. Very good job. All right. So, you know what? This is just the uh, first, of, or this is the third of what has been a busy, really, three to four days here in Knoxville for yeah. USA Cycling. Of course, we had the time trials at Oak Ridge that kind of kicked everything off on Thursday. Yeah, they did. Let's take a look at some of those right now. This happened at Melton Lake. Yep. And uh, yeah, Lawson Craddock, you know, took home the elite men's time trial title for the second year in a row. Leah Thomas won the women's race. As a matter of fact, we had a chance to catch up with both of them after they took to the podium.
Really, I wanted to give my best race. I can't control really what the other athletes do, and um, I had a very solid PR today, so I was really happy with my, my effort and my result. Yeah, it's a great course out here. It's beautiful with the lake, and uh, the environment, the heat, it definitely makes for, for a tough course, but I was pretty fortunate to have uh, a really good day, really good legs, and uh, yeah, really thankful to, to walk away again with the jersey. And then on Friday, we watched cyclists zip around the heart of downtown Knoxville. The Criterium, or the crit races we've been talking so much about, have been compared to NASCAR on two wheels. Boy, that is the truth. Their legs were a blur. Some familiar faces came out on top. Yeah, and I tell you what, just an amazing race to watch. Totally different setup than what we saw today. But Kendall Ryan taking home the gold for the women's race. Luke Lamperti snagging the gold for the men. These were repeat winners, so it was good to see them once again maintaining that dominance that we saw last year back on the podium, the top spot again this year. Matter of fact, we caught up with both of them as well after they received their awards. Yeah, just the confidence they had in me and, and yeah, just coming back and having a repeat and yeah, it's just, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, it, really, it doesn't really happen. Plus, go one, two, three, it's pretty wild. How are you feeling? Good, yeah, super good. Great. Yeah. Two-time champion. Yeah, it's super nice to be back here in Knoxville, uh, an amazing spot, so it's always good to be back. Yeah, we welcome them back. That's for sure. Good to see them. Uh, the USA Cycling Championships bring athletes, of course, across the country, right here to our beautiful East Tennessee. It's not just about the cyclists. There, of course, is such a big fan base. 10,000 people were expected to line the streets here today. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of those folks are going to be on Sherrod Hill. You heard us asking yes. Emma about it just a short time ago. That is really one of the big focal points of the race this year, where either you're going you're gonna to live or die. Right. Here along Sherrod Hill, a lot of people call it uh, really a quitter's corner, if you will, because they just run out of gas making their way up. But again, we had a chance to catch up with a number of fans that kind of line that area. Uh, a lot of those f people, this is the only time they get the chance to see each other. They've turned close friends over the year, that's for sure. And kind of a chance to tailgate, if you will. It really is for a it's cycling kind of sport. tailgating. Yeah. And well, again, we caught up with some of them. Take a listen. Here we quietly hung out in the piece of property that's technically not on her property. But as the crowd grew, so did the need for more space. That's when Sean met Brenda. We approached her and she was just very understanding, very appreciative of us approaching her and just opened her property to us. For the next three years, the conversation remained the same. Sean would call Brenda. Hey, you know, how's it going? Are you ready? And hesitantly asked to borrow her property. Hey, Brenda, do you mind if we, you know, come and take over your yard again? And she is always excited to help out. And so the relationship went until this year when Sean learned Brenda had been facing a terrifying disease. I had shared with them for the first five months of this year I've been battling cancer. Leaving Brenda unable to maintain her yard nor prepare for this year's race. We were all just kind of struck by that. And so Wednesday morning Brenda got a surprise. They show up with lawn mowers and weed whackers and blowers. Together, the Harper's Bike Shop crew manicured Brenda's entire yard. Everybody brought their own equipment and we all chipped in and just knocked it out. And left Brenda in a state of awe. It's, I'm just, I, I, I'm just so grateful to have been able to meet them and share this, this good time with them every year. They pour love into everybody they come in contact with. Now friends for life, Brenda says she hopes the games never leave. I love these guys and I don't ever want the, the championship race to stop because I want them every year and I want them in my life and I, I couldn't ask for better people. And for Sean, the feeling is mutual. Having people, you know, really acknowledge you is, is I don't know, really broke me up hearing her talk. So if you find yourself along Quitter's Corner, keep an eye out for this pair that was brought together by a race and kept together by a friendship. Reporting in Knoxville, Page Weeks, WATE 6 on your side. Oh, so much fun. Love to see that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Friendships made, you know, lots of bonding going on. And there is a reason USA Cycling has such a fan base. Uh, cycling at this level obviously requires such a physical dedication, and that's an understatement. I was going to say, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they're training 20 to 30 hours a week on the bike. Also, uh, they're in the gym, obviously, uh, toning, working what they need to do to prepare for, whether it's the breakaway, the flat straights, or the, or the hills that they're going to have to conquer. Whatever their strengths are. Yeah, exactly. 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 And we were able to catch up with Dr. Kevin Sprouse. He's a sports and exercise medicine specialist here locally that has even worked with cyclists ahead of the Tour de France. He says making it to the finish line 
is what this is all about. These are not recreational athletes that are showing up for this event. They are truly the best of the best in the U.S. And very few of them have jobs outside of cycling. And so it is a, a dedication to the sport, a dedication to training. These are athletes that go through amazing pain and discomfort in a, uh, in a four to six hour race day. Um, sometimes they crash going very fast and sustain pretty impressive injuries and then get back on the bike. All right, uh, so we're joined right now by Elizabeth Kubel. We've been watching these athletes up close. Elizabeth, you have been really up close with a lot of these athletes. Yes. You've been working for USA Cycling. You've been making your way around the course. Kind of walk us through what you've seen just from that first race tonight. Right, okay, so where do we even start with right. this, really? So one of the first assignments that we had was to hop in a team car, okay. which gives you such an incredible perspective. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there in the back seat of this car. You're watching. We were with uh, Team DNA Racing. So what they're doing is they are following their cyclists on the road they have got extra tires extra bike parts water bottles things that are so important where if for some reason one of these cyclists needs one of these vital tools they are there in their car able to get it to them so that was stop one then of course we had to go up to Sherrod Hill of course Sherrod you did road. you all know all about it that is really the party zone so everyone there is having such a good time they've got their bells they are so yes. loud then you have a complete atmosphere shift when you head over to the feed zone. So that was our next stop. So we, we went to the feed zone. That was fascinating. Very when you took us through uh, what these cyclists have to ingest to right. keep going. Right. And the way that they, it is business up there. Yeah. It is so quiet up there. They are really meticulous, really calculated. They mean business because you have to think about it. If you don't get these cyclists, these vital tools, that mm -hmm. water that they need, that energy gel, mm -hmm. the ice on a really hot day, if you don't get it to them on that lap, they have to endure a whole nother lap without it. And that really could be the difference between staying in the race or right. not. And we've so. seen so many, it's heartbreaking. Uh, so many of the, the cyclists pull off to the side, and you can mm -hmm. just see the heartbreak on their faces. They've worked so hard to get here. Of course. So they have all those team members and volunteers lined up to help keep them going, keep them energized, keep them focused. Yeah. And then, of course, we make our way over here to the start-finish line where it is so fun, and we get to meet so many fans and yeah. just talk about the process of taking this all in in downtown Knoxville. Great job, Elizabeth. Yeah, fantastic job. Yes. Elizabeth's got to go tackle the men's uh, race now. That's so we're going right. to let you go. This is your break, so thanks, thanks for coming guys. over. But great Thank we'll you see guys. you in a bit. Yes. Okay. Well, Elizabeth Kubel Elizabeth joining Kubel. us right now. She's going to be back on air here soon with USA Cycling. So excited. And you know, um, not all of the professional athletes racing right now, obviously, are visitors to East Tennessee. We have our own share of pro cyclists who live right here in Knoxville. The news may not be so good for one of them from today. Yep. And welcome back, everyone, to the USA Cycling National Championships. We were just under attack by a bee yes, or something we were. just a moment ago. Uh, but we're along Gay Street uh, getting ready for the men's race, which should be starting here shortly. The women's race already wrapped up. Yes, we're excited about that. And as we count down to that, we're going over the list of cyclists. You know, there are so many, obviously, from all parts of the country. But we also have some from right here in Knoxville. Let's introduce you to one of them, uh, Monk Fury. We've been talking about him. Took part in the Criterium race Friday night. Monk started cycling. When he was only 10 years old, he's from a family of cyclists, and now he's been doing it professionally for a decade. I mentioned a moment ago, not such good news for him. He didn't make it through right. uh, the criterion. Uh, right. Friday night. A little bit of a rough run, but we yeah. can say we're still proud of him. So and you know proud. what? He didn't, he's not originally from East Tennessee, but he was drawn here by the hills, especially on the South Knoxville side of the river. Yeah. He says he loves that, and he's hoping he's, well, he says he's not going anywhere anytime soon. I love having pro cycling nationals here. Um, it's such a great venue, the huge crowds, um, the whole town really gets involved. Knoxville has become a huge cycling community, not just for racing, but riders um, that just wanna, wanna go out on a stroll um, on their bike. But um, having it here, this is home for me. Um, I do not see myself leaving Knoxville. I love Knoxville. Um, hopefully have a family one day in Knoxville, so um, I love having nationals here. <laughs> oh, Monk, we do too, and we're glad you decided to stay here. We're so proud of you. Thanks for representing our city so well. And cycling has really caught on here in so yeah. many different facets. As a matter of fact, still ahead, we're going to show you how it's making an impact on law enforcement, most specifically UTPD, a program that they've been offering to help out local law enforcement agencies. Stay with us. We've got more to come.
And welcome back, everyone. I'm Bo Williams. We don't I'm, have to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I Lori should, Tucker. I should let you say who you are. Yeah. <laughs> That's Lori. Hey, we're glad you're with us today. <laughs> well, you, we are glad you're with us today. And as a matter of fact, as you know, USA Cycling has taken over the streets of downtown, but really yeah. for a lot of people here in Knoxville, cycling's an everyday thing. You know, UT police have a handful of officers on two wheels. Well, to, that's to get around campus. Now they're providing training for any other agency that wants it or needs it. Yeah, and I had a chance to stop by to get a little insight on what they do. If you think you're looking at a group of bicyclists just out for some afternoon fun, think again. The purpose of the course is to teach you not to ride a bicycle. You should already know how to ride when you get there. Uh, it's to teach you skills. What you are looking at is part of UTPD's Officer Bicycle Patrol Training Program. It's, it's hard, but it's very rewarding. The 40-hour program is open to officers not just from UT, but all around the area. We love to teach. We tell them up front. It's, we're here to push you, not to be nice to you, but to push you. Corporal Ben Doty is one of two program instructors. The course, which encompasses 80-plus miles on the bike, includes numerous drills that officers may use in any kind of scenario. You're going to do some uh, greenway riding, some sidewalk riding, and then some street riding. And that's not all. Riding downstairs, riding upstairs, jumping curbs. The box drill, the serpentine, uh, what's called an emergency stop. Being, you know, driving a bike as a kid is very different from what it is as a law enforcement officer. And trust me, Officer Amaro Carrion knows this firsthand as he completed the course just last year. Last time I was on a bike uh, before my 28-year-old you know, self, um, I was probably 15, 16 years old. So, I mean, like I said, falling off a bike at 15, 16, you just kind of stand up and shake it off. When you're 28 and you have some pain in your body, it, it hurts a lot more. Obviously, with school out right now, it's a lot quieter around campus. But come the fall, areas like this along Philip Fulmer will be packed. And that is where the training on the cycles really pays off. If you've ever experienced a Tennessee home game, it is like no other. Um, this area becomes extremely crowded. We were able to stop very fast. Um, we're able to cut uh, quickly, make very, very quick uh, short response movements to be able to continue forward and not cause an accident or cause damage to somebody else. Now we can go places where a vehicle cannot. So my response time is actually quicker because I don't have to just stick to the roadway. I have pedestrian walkway, grass, stairs. All of that is still something that I can access on a bicycle. And that's just part of the benefits from patrolling on two tires instead of four. But it just allows us a much more clean interaction than hopping out of a cruiser. It's a little bit of, of a, friendlier, uh, a friendlier aspect of the law enforcement community. And I think that's part of it, this is the interaction they can now have on yeah. a bicycle, talking with those in the public, much more approachable, works to their advantage. Sure. Yeah. You know, does all this cycling coverage spark <laughs> something in you? Do you want to go grab a bike, hop on, start racing? What do you think? Let's do it. I'm all for it. <laughs> let's go. You were talking about let's get a tandem. tandem. Yeah, let's get yeah, a tandem. I knew it. We're going to take a look at what it takes to pull this off when we come back. Stay with us. Oh, uh, welcome back, everybody. You know, we've had so much fun covering USA Cycling Championships really all week. Yeah, we really have. It's been a whole lot of fun, and, you know, it's enough to make you kind of want to get on a bicycle once yeah. again. As a matter of fact, WAT 6 on your side is Kristen Gallant. Went to two bikes in the old city to speak with the owner, a bike mechanic, and a rider. As U.S. Cycling comes to Knoxville, you might be inspired to get your own bike, but there are a few things you need to know before you go to the store and get one. I'm here with Matt Zing, and tell me, what are the first things people need to know before they buy a bike? Yeah, well, the last thing we want to do is sell you a bike that you're not going to use. Um, so, the very first question I ask a customer who walks in and they're new to cycling is, what kind of riding they want to do? Do they want to ride on the greenways? Are they going to be commuting to school? Are they going to be riding fast on the road or mountain biking? Um, and we just kind of open up that conversation and go from there. Okay, so for me and my family, and I'm sure for a lot of our viewers, they're going to be riding with their families on the Greenway. Yeah, um, actually the bike you're holding um, will do a very good job at that. It's an older mountain bike, um, but it's comfortable, it's stable, it's built to last, and it's very versatile. Just like with a car, you know, the better you treat your bike, the longer it's going to last you, the less money it's going to cost you. Let's get this bike in the stand and I can show you some pointers. Having a healthy chain will save you a lot of headache and dollars down the road. Um, and to clean it, it's real simple. Um, anytime it's starting to look grimy or dirty, especially after you take a ride in any sort of wet or muddy weather, you're going to want to degrease and clean your chain. And all you need is some sort of degreaser, um, a rag, 
And you're gonna spritz this right here. Get it nice and soaked. Then take your rag and pedaling backwards on the bike, you're gonna wanna rinse off this chain. And then once that's done, you're gonna go through with some sort of bike lube or anything like that, lubricating each roller on the chain. What are some of the things that cyclists need to have out on the road with them at all times? Um, yeah, well, aside from a helmet, um, having a uh, emergency kit that would include a multi-tool, a spare tube, a pump, some patches. Now that was a lot of information in a short amount of time, but I understand you all have some classes here at Two Bikes. Yeah, absolutely. Starting up in July, we're going to be kicking off our workshops again, um, and they'll include anything from free ride maintenance to how to fix a flat to more advanced things like drivetrain adjustments and brake adjustments. Uh, just keep an eye out on our webpage, twobikes.org, for more information. Great, and we'll have all of that information on wate.com. Thank you so much for walking us through Thank some you. bike basics. Here at Two Bikes, Chris and Gallant, W-A-T-E-6 on your side. All right, Kristen, thank you very much. And hey, now that you're ready to ride your bike, the men, they're getting ready to ride their bikes. The men's road race is going to start here shortly. It's going to be interesting, 17 laps. Oh, thanks for joining us for the extra mile. Look for all of our coverage on WATE.com.